resume the lecture. So I'm going to talk about the logistic regression in the context of the multi-level model uh, modeling. I wonder if everybody knows what the logistic regression is. So maybe I uh, can skip the basics and simply uh, start talking about uh, logistic regression in the context of multi-level modeling. Who doesn't know uh, about logistic regression? Okay. Who does not? Who does not? So everybody knows. Therefore, I will skip part of the presentation that you have uh, in your uh, Dropbox. And I will start with uh, uh, this. So, uh, in principle, uh, there is not much difference between uh, uh, linear regression and logistic regression in the context of the multi-level modeling, but there are some new answers that you uh, probably want to be aware of. Uh, let's see if this, yeah, this is better. So uh, at the, on the top you have an empty model, which uh, is essentially the same as in uh, uh, linear multi-level regression. So there is alpha variance and there is epsilon variance. The difference is on the left side of the equation is that instead of y, which is binary, either 0 or 1, we uh, uh, model the logit of probability that y equals 1. So this is uh, the, uh, the only difference. Another difference that for this empty model, you cannot calculate ICC in a regular way because individual level uh, uh, error terms uh, are all the same. Uh, and uh, therefore, the uh, uh, individual residual variance on the individual level within groups will always be fixed to 1. So the formula that I gave you for ICC will not work. Uh, in, the, in, in the case of logistic regression. Therefore, you need to uh, 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 you, as again, Google is of great help. Uh, and if you Google how to calculate ICC for logistic regression, the first reference that comes up is LMEER. That is the, the uh, uh, R function, and there is a uh, forum that uh, asks and answers questions about statistics. And uh, there are different approaches to calculating uh, uh, the uh, variance. So some people, because individual uh, level variance, see ICC for logit, uh, is intercept variance divided by intercept variance square is, is unnecessary here, plus p squared over 3. So this is one uh, uh, popular approach. So instead of uh, the residual variance on individual level that is not available in logistic regression, uh, people suggest to use pi squared over 3, or which is the same as this. And if you do it in R, pi is a number. So you simply uh, enter pi, and it gives you 3.14. So you can use uh, uh, another uh, article uh, suggests instead of using pi squared over 3, it suggests to use a more complex expression 15 over 16 squared multiplied by pi squared and then divided over 3. So both approaches are approximation, but they still give you an idea 
uh, whether the groups are significantly different from each other, and uh, whether you need, uh, therefore, uh, to run a multi-level regression, or, or maybe a regular logistic regression will be enough. So uh, again, the rule of thumb, the simple answer, uh, the simple rule is uh, that uh, if uh, ICC that you calculate this way is less than 5%, then you perhaps do not need uh, the uh, uh, multi-level approach. If it is more than 10%, then you definitely need uh, the multi-level approach. Okay. So this, uh, the, uh, the first equation is the uh, equation for the empty model. This is the one you use to calculate ICC. By the way, you do not calculate ICC for other models, only for empty models, right? Uh, and uh, a, uh, 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 not an empty model would look something like this. So we have alpha j, uh, beta for gender times gender, beta for age times age, and plus uh, a residual variance on individual level within groups, say within countries. And alpha j is modeled separately. In this case, for instance, uh, we simply say that there is variance that is left unexplained. So uh, everything is pretty much the same as in uh, linear multi-level regression. So uh, when you do a script for a logistic regression, you have to use another function. Instead of LMER, you use GLMER. Those of you who have some experience with R probably know that LM stands for linear model and GLM stands for generalized, exactly a generalized linear model. Uh, so let's look at the uh, syntax. Y is our dependent variable. Then we uh, have uh, gender uh, or the indicator for female, a dummy variable. We have age, and we allow intercepts to vary across countries. Then uh, the next argument after the comma is necessary to let uh, the program know what kind of uh, generalized model we want to use. Family binomial tells the program that we want to use uh, that our dependent variable is binary. Family binomial tells that the y is, uh, y here, by the way, in, in the set of examples that I'm going to run, is religiosity. It's a dummy variable showing one if the person considers himself religion and zero if he considers himself not religious. Uh, all right, so family binomial. And then a sub-argument in uh, parentheses is link logit. Because you, again, some of you probably know that uh, instead of logit, you can run probit models. Uh, so the coefficients will be different. But if you want uh, logit rather than probit, then you uh, specify link logit. So this is how you run uh, logistic regression in, in R. Uh, and it's M1. Right. So if you want a brief uh, summary, you use the display function. It's, I think, a feature of the ARM package. Uh, we have used summary, uh, which gives a bit more copious output than display. But either one will give you uh, some idea of what your model looks like. Because I sit uh, on the side of the table, because there's, my screen is dark here. So I, I will not be able to see questions from this end. So please raise your voice instead of your hand when you, uh, when you have questions. Uh, well, this is just basic. Uh, let's look at the output. Uh, uh, for this uh, model. So this is the formula, the same as it was shown before. 
So it's religiosity uh, predicted by age and gender, and the intercept uh, varies by country, family binomial, and link is logit. So this is uh, the output of the display function. It is very uh, uh, short and simple. We have uh, coefficient estimates, uh, and we have uh, coefficient standard errors for fixed effects. So the uh, display begins with fixed effects, which I actually like. Uh, you, you may have noticed that I did summaries. I started always with fixed effects that were presented at the bottom of the summary output. Uh, so uh, there, are, there are no z values, but uh, they are, it's not difficult to see which uh, effects are significant here because uh, you can simply divide uh, the coefficient estimate by the coefficient standard error and if it is greater than two in absolute value, then it is significant. So we see that both age and gender, well, intercept we don't care about much. Uh, we see that uh, both age and gender are uh, statistically significant because two divided by zero is, very, is a very large number and 63 divided by two is also a very large number. These are statistically very significant uh, effects, meaning that older people uh, tend to be more religious. This is uh, uh, a, s a sample of either World Value Survey or EVS, European Value Study, or Combined World Value Survey EVS. Well, we have 46 countries, so... Yeah, uh, we, uh, we can uh, do even plots in pretty much the same way as Irina showed us. So the same syntax for, for instance, if you use SJ plot package, uh, we'll do a marginal effects graphically for you. And this is actually more useful in the context of uh, logistic regression than uh, in the context of a linear regression because in the uh, linear regression, the effects are easy to interpret. They are linear, so they show how much i is going to change if we change x by, y, uh, uh, by one unit. In logistic regression, this is uh, uh, the straightforward interpretation of uh, uh, coefficients is uh, uh, not trivial. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, being able to uh, show the graphically, say, the marginal effects of, uh, I I is very important. Therefore, this, I encourage you to learn more about this SJ plot package. Oh, yes. So w wait until the, after the lunch break. If you, if you have enough stamina and strength. Okay, and then after the fixed effects come uh, the random effects. Uh, they are titled error terms. So uh, it provides standard deviation for intercepts uh, and standard deviation for individual uh, residuals. They do not make sense because they are always one. This is why you cannot calculate ICC in an empty model for logistic regression, and you have to use uh, a formula with pi. So instead of this one, you do, for instance, pi squared over three uh, to calculate ICC. Then you see that the number of observations is about 52,000. The number of groups, in this case countries, is 46. And then there's deviance uh, statistics. Okay, uh, if you do summary instead of display, you get a more copious output. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, coefficient estimates are given with more digits after the decimal point. Uh, the, uh, they provide also z values. And uh, we see that intercept, by, by the way, is not significant. Uh, whereas age and gender are very, very significant. Uh, uh, and
and there is also probability of the null hypothesis based on the z value. But as in the uh, linear regression in the multi-level context, it is more uh, reliable to do chi-square tests to compare models using the ANOVA function, like we did with, um, with the linear regression, rather to rely on the z values. Especially when you have complex models with many effects, z values may be not so reliable. Why? Huh? Why? Why? This is just the case. <laughs> Uh, well, because of multicollinearity, for instance, this is, uh, there is one reason. When you have many uh, uh, variables in the model, many effects, right? So they all influence one another, and uh, uh, the, uh, therefore the effect of one variable in the presence of another variable may look very different. Uh, and this also depends on set of variables because there may be some very complex um, relationships between variables and such strange events as regression suppression may, uh, may come. Do you know about regression suppression? Well, this is not the topic of our conversation today, so I will not delve into this, but regression suppression is one interesting effect of uh, multicollinearity is when your uh, estimate, beta estimate, appears to be a lot larger than it is in fact. Uh, so uh, uh, this is be because of a particular configuration uh, in the set of variables that you are using in the model. So in complex models, uh, T values or Z values especially in the multi-level context, are not very reliable. And it is better to use, well, in the OLS regression, F-tests, and then um, uh, uh, in, in this context, chi-square test. The same with OLS? Yes, yes, yes. And the same rules for comparing models apply. So if you want to compare random effects, for instance, uh, for significance, test for significance, then the two models have to be nested. Random effects are different, but fixed effects are the same. And the other way around, if you want to uh, test for significance random components, then uh, random components are different, fixed effects are the same. So, so the, uh, essentially the same uh, approach. Well, there is a... Uh, Nothing particularly. Uh, uh, well, uh, as I said, the coefficients uh, in the logistic regression are hard to interpret. But imagine if it was uh, a model without explanatory variable at all, there would be no age and no uh, gender, right? Only the intercept. And the intercept is zero. So what does this tell you? This tells you that the uh, uh, proportion of successes and failures in your dependent variable, that is ones and zeros, because your dependent variable is binary, is 50-50. Why is that? Because if the probability of success is 50, then the uh, odds is uh, it's like 50 over 50 is 1. And then log it, which is the log of odds, uh, uh, log of 1 is 0. So this is what it tells you, right? But of course, in the presence of explanatory variables, this straightforward interpretation is not possible because when you introduce explanatory variables, then they move uh, intercept away from the grand mean. But nevertheless, the intuitive interpretation of, uh, of this zero is that the distribution of religious and not religious people is roughly, in the sample, is roughly 50-50, half. Uh, it's not exactly 50-50 because, again, uh, the introduction of explanatory variables 
moves the intercept away from the, from the mean. But this gives you some, at least some idea. OK? But we can uh, express it specifically, right? So here it's going to be for male uh, with the H, uh, with the zero H. Yeah, uh, <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> So, uh, newly born baby, uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense right? because the sample only includes people uh, starting with the age 18. So, uh, again, uh, this is, by the way, uh, why sometimes centering is helpful because our observations do not start at zero. They start at the age 18, right? So, ah. Uh, but then the uh, interpretation of age and gender are straightforward. The older people are more religious, and women tend to be more religious than men. All right. So uh, the second model uh, here adds uh, uh, first level interaction. So this is not a cross level interaction. It's an interaction of two variables on the first level. Uh, so in this case, age and gender interact. Uh, what is the meaning of this interaction effect? Is that the effect of age is different for genders. Yeah. So as people get older, maybe women get even more religious than men, for instance. Uh, in, in the case of uh, Russia, this is definitely true, because if you go to church, you see that older women are there, and uh, this is the, sort of the bulk of the population. Older men, well, you maybe see one or two, but mostly you see older women. Um, then you do uh, display and summary. I mean, I mean, the rest of the model is the same, so there is nothing to comment. Uh, so summary, again, gives you a more copious output. Let's look at the fixed effects. Random effects come first, but I always like to start with fixed effects. So uh, again, we see uh, the main effect of age is still positive and significant, meaning that older people are more religious. Uh, the effect of uh, gender, and this is female, uh, is uh, also positive and significant, meaning that women are more religious. And uh, then the interaction effect is positive and also significant, which means that with age, women get more religious compared to men. So the change in the religiosity uh, for women is greater with age than for men. Right? So uh, the random effects are, uh, well, the intercepts. The, it gives you the uh, variance of intercepts. And it does not give you, in the summary, the uh, variance of um, uh, epsilons, the individual residual variance, because it doesn't make sense in the context of logistic regression. Um, the next model, model three, is a model with random intercepts and random slopes. But there is no group level predictor, which means that the variance, the both alpha variance and beta variance, are left unexplained. Right? So uh, what does the syntax look like? Religiosity depends on gender and age. And then one plus gender and con uh, by country, which means that intercepts uh, and uh, gender slopes vary by country. But this is left unexplained because there is no second level predictor. Uh, everything else is the same. So let's look at the summary. Uh, again, fixed effects have not, uh, I mean, the message is still the same. Gender has a strong positive effect. I mean, female gender 
has a strong positive effect, and age uh, has also a strong positive effect. Then there is uh, variance of uh, intercepts, 1.57, and also standard deviation, and variance of uh, gender slopes, 0 0.04. For eight. So even though uh, you see that both gender and age are uh, very significant variables, the size of the effect is different, uh, perhaps, uh, because the, the, uh, the variance of slopes for gender suggest that uh, they can uh, vary only a little, a little bit. And whether the, this is a significant variance remains to be seen. Maybe we can test and uh, find out that uh, we should not let uh, gender uh, be, uh, be uh, gender slopes to be random. Maybe fixed will, will work. But this is a matter of test. This is a matter for testing. Uh, finally, there is this uh, a, a group level predictor model uh, where we have uh, gender and GDP. Now, GDP is the uh, country level variable. It's GDP per capita, of course, which indicates how rich the country is. And then, uh, again, uh, intercepts and gender slopes are allowed to vary by country. And we do display and summary. And let's, uh, uh, let's look at the uh, uh, output. So this is the output for the summary. Again, fixed effects. Uh, gender still has a positive and significant effect. GDP has uh, a significant negative effect, which means that in rich countries, people tend to be less religious on average than uh, people in poorer countries. Then there's interaction, cross-level interaction effect between gender and GDP. Now let's try and interpret this cross-level interaction effect. So it is negative. Uh, so gender is female, and GDP is obviously, it is negative. So what does it tell us? Oh, well, yes, it is, it's true that it is not significant. So maybe it should be dropped from the model. But still, let's practice and uh, try to interpret if it was significant. What would it mean? For women, the, the richer the country is, the less religious they are. So the GDP has a higher negative effect for women than men? Uh, the difference between men and females in rich countries is, is less, than yes, in terms of religiosity. OK. All right, so uh, this is uh, all the presentation. And uh, do we have time left? How much? An hour. An hour. So we could go through the script or? Just ask. OK, let's uh, look at the variance of slopes, right? So uh, in, in this model, uh, model 3, uh, where we have gender and age, uh, but no second level predictor, and, uh, right? Uh, no cross level interaction effect. The variance of slopes is estimated at 0 0.048 which is rather close to 0 0.05. Uh, so, uh, so this 
shows that the difference between men and women in terms of religiosity varies a little bit country by country. In some countries, this difference is greater. In some countries, this difference is smaller. The fixed effect is this, but this is like the grand slope. And this uh, gives you an idea of how much this varies. So if you take two standard deviations, which is 0.22, so two standard deviations would be 0.44 approximately. And then uh, you take these fixed effects and you add 0.44 and you subtract 0.44, you will get a range approximately between 0.20 and point, uh, actually 1.0. Oh, one oh. This is the range of the difference between, uh, uh, between men and women in terms of religiosity across countries. So in some countries, this difference is like, uh, point, the minimum difference is like 0.2. In some countries, it is as large as 1.0, but on average, it's 0.65. This, uh, this is uh, what it tells you. Uh, now, the story here is not very much different. Uh, because if you look at this estimate, it has become a bit greater but not by much. So it used to be 0 0.048 or 0.49, and it's uh, 0 0.055 now. So it's changed a little bit. So the, uh, the slopes in this model vary uh, to a greater extent, but not by much. So uh, th which means that the basic story is still the same. Right? So if you look at the fixed effect, this is now estimated as 0 0.7, and uh, uh, two times 0 0.23 or 24 is roughly, very roughly 0.5, right? So uh, 0 0.7 plus minus 0 0.5 will give you a range still from 0.2 to 1.2, which is the difference between men and women in terms of religiosity, given all other variables in the model. And this is, the, uh, this is basically why the estimates are a little bit different, because in that model, the set of variables was different. Therefore, the effect of gender is estimated a little bit differently. We, we, uh, we get uh, different estimations. But the basic story is nevertheless still the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, then we can look at the script uh, and uh, we'll need to switch to the other computer and hopefully it will be done easily and without much noise. Yes, they are. So I'll probably start from here. Uh, this is a package that reads uh, files in foreign format. R can read files in uh, SPSS format, in Stata format, in SES format, and uh, in uh, some other formats. So the function to read SPSS file is read SPSS. If you want it to read in uh, Stata files, the function you want to use, read.dta. 
uh, and uh, uh, these functions are located in the foreign package. So uh, this is simply uh, this simply reads in the file. There are some warning messages, but we can ignore them. Then we clean the file of the uh, missing values because uh, R is very sensitive to missing values and many procedures in R will not run if uh, there are missing values, All right? So you have either to clean the data or to uh, impute the data. Uh, imputation now is a very popular approach and uh, increasingly more people use it and R has very good tools uh, to impute, uh, to do multiple imputation and impute values, uh, uh, like uh, there's a package called Amelia that does it. Um, in some procedures you can use uh, uh, different estimators, and in some procedures you use special arguments to ignore missing values, but uh, generally it is a good idea to clean your data of missing values. However, you have to be careful about this because if you have a very large file, like uh, World Value Survey, for instance, or, or European, this is European Value Study, uh, which is also a very, very large survey, like uh, hundreds of variables, right? And of course, uh, at, le uh, at least one missing value will always be there on each variable. And when, uh, and, uh, when you clean the data, the program deletes the whole row. And if you uh, have a very large file with a large number of variables and you do an AOMID data, you will get an empty file because the program will or, uh, delete all or almost all cases. So a good idea is to prepare the file first and select only those variables that you really want to use. And uh, only on those selected small number of variables, you prepare uh, a separate file and you clean that file. Do not clean the big file because it will probably destroy the file completely. So uh, see, we, uh, we do not want to erase this file data, we keep it because we uh, give the cleaned data a new name, data one, precisely because we want to keep the original file, okay? So fortunately, uh, in this case, the number, uh, this uh, file has been prepared already, uh, so there is a small selected number of... Uh, yes, yes, there it's, uh, uh, it should be there in your Dropbox. Uh, can you check? It's a day two folder. This file? And file called ML by norm logit R. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we see that there are, there, there are not that many variables. Uh, country, this is never missing. Uh, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight variables. So uh, uh, we can see the country distribution. Why don't we see the country distribution? Uh, again, uh, the output doesn't fit the screen because the letters are large. But uh, generally, you should be able to see this. Uh, or you can scroll. Can you scroll here? Yes. So this is the distribution of uh, cases by country. Table is a very nice function that gives you 
a simple distribution if you uh, specify one variable. If you specify two variables uh, separated by comma, it will give you a table. If you specify three variables separated by commas, uh, it will give you a matrix, and, uh, an, an array rather, a three-dimensional array, and so on. Um, so we simplify the names of the variables. Uh, we tell the program that country is uh, not a numeric variable. Uh, just in case. Uh, so we create copies of the variables, new vectors that we will be operating with. So these are separate objects. This is one possible way to go without attaching and detaching uh, files. Uh, you simply create new vectors as new objects that, and you're going to work with them. Nevertheless, attach is uh, still used and it sort of interferes with the objects that uh, are already there. Hopefully it is not a problem. Okay, this uh, creates a uh, our dependent variable, I believe, attitudes. Detach, yes, so we have added one more variable to the file. It's called attitudes. Uh, this is what this new variable looks like, the first six values. Yes, these are gender equality attitudes. These are gender. Yeah, so it's a simple composite. It's a simple composite index. We simply um, sum uh, the variables and uh, divide them by the number of variables. So this is the average score on uh, variables that uh, measure more or less gender equality attitudes. Use it as an another variable here, right? Yes, it is also possible to do uh, exploratory factor analysis and uh, use the regression procedure to to scale uh, to save the sc uh, factor scores. You can also do uh, perhaps a more proper procedure and, and run uh, confirmatory factor analysis and then uh, use. Uh, uh, structural equation models, this is also possible. Or you can use principal component analysis and extract the, main, the first main component and use it later as, a, as the dependent variable. So there are many possible approaches. In this case, we do a simple uh, composite index. Now we rescale uh, this so that uh, zero is conservative and uh, one is liberal. So the, the new composite variable uh, ranges between zero and one, where zero means conservative and uh, one means liberal. Uh, so we create a new object that stores this variable and uh, we uh, calculate means for each country on this new variable. And um, uh, this is Europe because this is European value study. And you see that uh, some countries are more liberal than the others. By the way, I, I believe if you compare Russia and uh, Turkey, they are quite similar to each other, right? Uh, 0.77 and 0.68, yeah. which yes. means, well, uh, Russia is just a little bit more, more liberal, but not by much. Um, but Great Britain, for example, it's 0.68. I mean, it's weird, you know? Uh, okay. UK.
Let's see. Where, where is the United Kingdom? It's the second column, the, the last row. Oh, Great Britain, yeah. So weird. It is weird. Conservative is zero, and uh, we change, we change the, the scale, I believe, I believe. But let's look at the distribution. No, Kosovo is, this is really, and Macedonia, this is really hard to believe. Yeah, Luxembourg is almost equal to Kosovo. Yeah, yeah, uh, but on the other hand, Sweden is, is where one would expect it to be. Uh, uh, yeah, Norway is also where one would. No, this is what the data tell us. Uh, I'm afraid uh, this is uh, the European Value Study. Maybe it's the quality of their data. Uh, I think they also have Azerbaijan, and um, there were some. There may be a problem when the questions are directed, have opposite directions. But if they have the same direction, it does not matter much, because even such a simple composite index will work. Uh, the, this is, Well, uh, I, shall, I should say that some of the data make more sense than the other. Like, uh, for instance, if you compare the difference between Azerbaijan and Finland, you get what you would expect. The, uh, the, uh, indeed, the uh, value for Great Britain, this is strange. And, uh, but let's continue. Yeah. Uh, Let's continue. Uh, there is another set of means that we want to use. This is GDP. Um, and uh, hopefully this the, 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 this seems to be right. Kosovo and Macedonia and Montenegro are very low, and Luxembourg is, of course, the leader in Europe. So this seems to be all correct. Uh, Sorry, what is the round comment It's just rounding the numbers? Yes, well, because you see, uh, it could be done in separate lines, but in R, and this is actually a nice feature, you can use the output of one function as the argument for the next function. So uh, the core here is the t apply. So this is uh, what we do. We calculate means uh, by, by gender attitudes for each country. And then we take the result of this function as the argument for the round function. So in the round function, there are two arguments, round what and round how much. The arguments are always separated by commas. So we round the means to the second decimal point. Now uh, we load. Uh, I think this is all correct. Uh, there's no, maybe we don't need uh, the multi-level package. Hopefully it will work without it. Uh, so this is the empty model. And uh, notice that uh, it takes more time to calculate logistic regression. Uh, especially when the model becomes more complex compared to the linear, uh, 
uh, model. This is uh, computationally more complex procedure, so it may take some time to calculate, uh, to uh, fit a uh, complex logistic multi-level model. Now we do display. And so this is what we uh, got. Uh, this is the gamma, the fixed effect. Uh, and there are two random effects, alpha variance and epsilon variance. Right? So etas uh, and epsilons. Now, epsilons do not make sense in logistic regression. So therefore, as I mentioned, if you want to calculate ICC, you uh, have to do it. Uh, we don't do it, but uh, it's easy to calculate. So uh, what you do is you take uh, roughly 0.53 squared, right? This is alpha variance, and you want to divide it by the total variance. Uh, and normally it's, again, alpha variance plus, and here you would want to put in uh, res individual residual variance within groups, but in logistic regression, it is not estimated. And therefore, there are several approaches. And one of the uh, approaches to simply use squared pi divided by 3. So this should give us a rough estimate of the ICC. And it's not that great. It's about 8%. Uh, well, it's larger than 5%, but it's smaller than 10%. And uh, it's uh, up to you to decide. Uh, this is the empty model. Uh, ICC is always calculated for the empty model. It doesn't make sense to calculate ICC for anything else but uh, the empty model. This is uh, kind of your first step to see whether you need the multi-level approach at all or, or whether you can do without it. The ICC rule of thumb, uh, yeah, when it is 5% or less, you definitely don't want to use uh, the multi-level approach. When it is 10% or more, you definitely uh, uh, want to use the multi-level approach. And when it is sort of between 5 and 10, uh, it's up to you to decide. Oh, the calculation here. It's on the screen. Uh, so what we do uh, normally in the linear uh, multi-level model to calculate ICC, we take the alpha variance, which is the standard deviation squared, right? And divide it by full variance, which is the uh, alpha variance plus epsilon variance, right? So uh, as a result, ICC in the linear uh, context shows us the proportion of variance that is accounted for by groups. So it, can, uh, it basically compares variance across groups uh, as a, yes, over the total variance, uh, across groups and within groups. Now, in the context of logistic regression, uh, the uh, uh, residual individual variance, epsilon, does not make sense because it is, it, uh, it's, it's fixed. It's always either zero or one. So uh, uh, it's fixed to one. And therefore, in order to calculate uh, ICC in uh, uh, logistic regression, people suggest various approaches, one of which is pi, uh, instead of uh, individual uh, level variance, uh, uh, you uh, put pi squared divided by 3. And uh, the rest of the formula is left unchanged. So th this is alpha variance divided by alpha variance, but instead of epsilon variance, we put this expression. Hmm. An alternative approach, and I've, sh I've shown you on that other computer is to use an even more complex 
uh, 15 divided by 16 squared multiplied by pi squared divided by still 3, I believe. Yeah. They will give you approximately the same result. We can actually try this. So instead of uh, uh, this, we can also uh, uh, put, uh, OK, it has to be squared, 15 divided by 16. And uh, let's see what happens. Well, uh, it's about the same result. It's 8%. Uh, some people say that this is a better approach, so it gives you a more <laughs> uh, it gives you a more precise estimate. Not because it's higher, but because it is more precise. All right, so uh, this is it for the empty model, and we can now. Um, move on, uh, we'll uh, not need to look at the summary. Well, coefficients may be uh, of interest because I mentioned this command uh, uh, before the break. So if you... Oh, we didn't run. Oh, I'm sorry. Notice it, it takes increasingly more time because this is a more complex model. When we should end? Half an hour. Half an hour, OK. So now we can display this. And uh, uh, we see that uh, uh, the fixed effects for intercept and for female gender. And these are significant effects because 97 divided by 8 is a large number, and 31 divided by 2 is also a large number. And then there are random part, there are uh, intercepts whose standard deviation is provided. And uh, unfortunately for residuals, as is always the case with logistic regression, uh, it's fixed to 1, so it is not informative. Uh, we can do also summary, but let's not do it. Uh, let's, let's do the coefficients. So when you do coefficients, you uh, get actually random slopes and random intercepts. In this case, you, uh, you, you get only random intercepts because slopes are fixed. And you can see that the slope for each country is the same, whereas the intercept uh, varies across countries. You can do fixed effects. Uh, and you can do random effects. Now, when you do random effects, you get ATAs. So rather than intercepts, you get um, uh, ATAs that without gammas. When you do coefficients, you get gammas plus ATAs. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, these are only eighters without gammas, therefore they are small and they center around zero, right? The next model is the random intercepts and random slopes model and one individual level interaction effect. Uh, no, no, no interaction effects, just are uh, random intercepts and random slopes, right? So uh, gender attitudes depend on gender, and intercepts and gender slopes are allowed to vary by country. And it takes time for the program to uh, fit the model because it's even a more complex model. So this will be, uh, unfortunately, the case with uh, nonlinear models when they are multi-level. It takes time. We display them, so we see uh, fixed effects first. Uh, so the intercept is significant. The uh, effect of female gender is also significant. And we see uh, standard deviation of the random 
effects. Yes. Is there a question? Yes. Can you speak up a little? I can't hear you very well. Yes, uh, here for, because it's written here all the country in the article. You asked the program to mention all the country in the random effect. Yes, yeah, so when you do, uh, you're asking about this, right? Uh -huh. Yes, so when you do random effects or when you do coefficients, the program gives you uh, coefficients for each country, for each group. So you have, uh, uh, in this case, you have coefficients uh, that are gamma plus eta. That is, this is alpha variance. And you also, uh, it also gives you fixed effects. Fixed effects will be the same for each country, but nevertheless, they will be repeated for each country. When you do fixed effects, uh, it will not give you random uh, uh, variables or random coefficients. It will only give you fixed coefficients, constants. So in this case, it will give you beta that is fixed, right? And finally, when you do random effects, it will give you etas without gammas. So it will, it will not be intercept, but it will only be the varying part of the intercept. The varying part of the intercept without the uh, constant, without the fixed constant, without gamma. And they will be centered around zero, but they will be given for each group, in this case, for each country. OK, have we, di uh, have we done model two? Yes, we have done model two. Again, we can repeat fixed effects and uh, coefficients, but uh, the procedure is the same. And uh, I don't know whether it makes sense. Uh, so this, these are two fixed effects. And if you do coefficients, there will be coefficients for each country. And now you see that slopes are different, right? So this is gamma plus eta, and these are alphas that are unique for each country. And this is, uh, again, gamma plus eta. That uh, This is how we model beta. And beta is also unique for each country in this case. Uh, the next one is fixed slopes and uh, individual and group level predictors, right? Because we have not only gender, which is the first level predictor, but also GDP, which is the second level predictor, right? And, um, and it takes time, again, to fit this model. Well, uh, it's a bit faster because the slopes are fixed, so it doesn't have to calculate slope for each country, and therefore it is a bit faster. This is a simpler model, at least computationally. So we see significant gender effects, and as for the GDP, we are not sure which one is larger. Therefore, summary might be more helpful in this case than display. Uh, uh, but uh, GDP is, in fact, significant. We can know this from, from summary. Oh, no, it is insignificant. Turned out to be insignificant. Maybe there is a problem with the data or with the way the index was calculated here, the dependent variable. Right. But we have also more these uh, varieties, like monsters, actually. Yes, let's, uh, let's look at this. You may be right. Uh, so uh, in model three, we have uh, gender and GDP. Uh, these are fixed, and there are no random effects, right? In M2, we have gender, but not GDP. But GDP, uh, but gender is allowed to vary by country, so there is an additional yes. So this is actually wrong. This, uh, these models should not be compared directly. They, they are not nested, because 
uh, we get from model 2 to model 3 by simultaneously adding uh, and uh, deleting effects. We add GDP, but we delete random slopes. So this... Yeah, uh, model 3 with model 1, you mean? Yeah, this, this would be better. And And this tests for the significance of GDP, and it turns out to be not significant because chi-square is small. For one degree of freedom, you should expect at least 3.84, right? Whereas in this case, we have uh, a small value. Therefore, we should choose a small model. The smaller model here is this model, the model without uh, GDP. So, uh, before we uh, move on to the uh, practical session with assignment, uh, I would like to conclude the session that we started before uh, the lunch break. We checked the data, and the European value study obviously has some problems, because we downloaded the data again, uh, looked at the distribution of single variables before composing the index, and there was something in uh, badly wrong with, uh, with uh, these distributions. Uh, so uh, this is uh, an old script that used to work two years ago. Maybe something has changed on the site, and the current data is obviously not correct, so this is not working. But uh, we uh, uh, will use uh, data from World Value Survey instead. And uh, this is uh, a good and reliable data. And I'm very thankful for Irina, who helped me uh, uh, fix this problem. So we have already uh, run all the models. So I will not go through the, uh, all the script. But rather, I will uh, go through displays and summaries only. So. Uh, we start with the empty, uh, oh, the empty model is here. We'll not repeat it. It's uh, more or less clear. So let's do the uh, model uh, one, which is random intersets and fixed slopes model. And uh, here we go. Uh, so uh, the uh, fixed slope is significant for female, uh, uh, which means to remind you that our dependent variable now is gender attitudes, where higher values mean that these attitudes are more liberal with respect to women. And uh, the data shows that women tend to be more liberal towards themselves than men. Okay? Yeah, this is world value survey data. And uh, it's, uh, it's been uh, uploaded on the Dropbox. Right, and you. I need to log in to be able to upload it. Okay, it, it will be uploaded very soon. Let's do it uh, later. Uh, the file is going to be called wvs.rdata because it's stored in the R format. We have already seen coefficients, fixed effects, and random effects. It all worked, so I will not repeat this. Then there is uh, this second model, a uh, model with random in intercepts and random slopes. Let's look uh, on, uh, at the syntax just in case. So uh, there's a gender effect, but then intercepts and gender slopes are allowed to vary by country. And we can uh, look at the uh, display output and see that Again, uh, gender is very significant. Uh, and there is information on variation of, uh, of uh, the country intercepts and slope intercepts. Right? So these are variation, uh, standard deviation of slope intercepts and uh, standard deviations of, the, uh, of intercepts. Now this is variation of slopes. Again, I will not run through fixed effects, uh, random effects, and so on, because we have done this already. 
I am moving on to the next model, uh, which is uh, a model with uh, gender and GDP. So we have a second level predictor, GDP. Uh, the uh, intercepts are random, but slopes are fixed because only intercepts are allowed to uh, vary by country here. Uh, let's look at the uh, display. And you can see now that GDP is significant as it should be because uh, in, uh, if you divide 0.5 by 0.06, you get a large number, like uh, uh, Z value is 8. So this is a very significant effect. And it's positive, which means that in richer countries, people tend to be more liberal toward women than uh, do people in poorer countries. Uh, uh, okay, I, I won't go through summary. ANOVA, well, now we can do ANOVA. Let's do the ANOVA. And now chi-square is significant, as it should be, because here we are comparing two models, one with GDP, so there is an extra fixed effect, uh, the other without GDP, and uh, for one degree of freedom, we get chi-square reduction of more than nine points, and it is significant because uh, the critical value is 3.84, so uh, the uh, probability uh, is small, which means chi-square is significant, and when chi-square is significant, or it is large, we choose a larger model. That is, we choose the model with uh, uh, GDP. And finally, a uh, model with uh, cross-level interaction effect. Let's look at the syntax. So again, gender attitudes uh, is the dependent variable. It is predicted by female gender, by country's GDP. We also allow uh, the cross-country, uh, uh, cross-level uh, interaction effect and intercepts and slo gender slopes are allowed to vary by country. So this has already been uh, fitted. Let's look at the display. Uh, so there are more fixed effects now, well, intercepts. Gender is positive and significant because if you, you divide 140 by 35, you get roughly three, or actually four. So Z value of four is significant. GDP is also very, very significant. The Z value is like 11 or something. Uh, uh, gender, and now the cross-level interaction effect. The cross-level interaction effect is, uh, well, we are not sure here, but we can do summary and, uh, and find out whether it is significant for sure. It is significant at the 5% significance level, so it's marginally significant, uh, but still significant. And it is negative. Now let's try and interpret what it means. So, gender female, the main effect is positive, which means that generally females are different from males in that they prefer more liberal attitudes towards themselves, right, towards females, right? Uh, so they have more liberal gender attitudes. The main effect of GDP is also positive, which means that in richer countries, people tend to prefer uh, more liberal attitudes towards women. But now the cross-level interaction effect is negative. So what does this mean? It means that the difference between females and males in richer countries is smaller than it is in poorer countries. Uh, are, we, are you with me? Okay, so why, why, why is that? Well, let's think about, uh, let's say, Sweden on one hand and um, maybe uh, Russia on the other hand, right? And so in Sweden, Pretty much everyone is liberal with respect to women, right? So, uh, because everyone is liberal with respect to women. The difference between males and females in Sweden is small. 
So uh, whereas if you uh, look at poorer countries such as Russia or maybe Macedonia or maybe Azerbaijan, uh, you find that uh, the uh, uh, difference between males and females is greater because uh, the overall distribution of gender attitudes is less liberal and women have a room to differ from men in such countries. So this is why uh, uh, this uh, interaction effect is negative. So this concludes uh, my lecture. Sorry it took a little bit extra time. And Irina, thank you very much again. And uh, I pass the floor on to Irina, who will uh, present her practical session.